Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be performing a von Neumann stability analysis on the uh, Crank-Nicholson implicit differencing method that we use to model how heat is going to diffuse through a bar um, when you begin heating it from um, two ends, which we did in the last video. But today we are going to be using the von Neumann stability analysis to show why uh, stability is not going to be an issue when you use the Crank-Nicholson method. All right. If you remember two or three videos ago when we did the explicit differencing method, at the end of the video I showed that when the time step became greater than half a second, things got all wonky and started going to infinity, and our graphs show that, right? Things start going up and down all over the place. But we're not going to have the same issue when we use the uh, Crank-Nicholson method that we saw for right here, all right? So when we use that explicit differencing method, we show that this U value over here could not exceed greater than 0.5, all right? But when we perform the stability analysis for this method, we're going to be looking at something a little bit different, all right? We are going to be looking at the temperature at the same position at a different time step, and we're going to be relating those two values with the variable omega, all right? So we'll go ahead and write that out. We'll show that relationship right quick. All right, so we are going to have our um, future time step over here on the left. And this is going to be related with omega. And then Tjn right here. And we know that omega cannot be exceed 1, all right? Omega is going to have to be less than or equal to 1, which makes sense, right? As time moves on, the temperature at the previous time should not be greater than the temperature in the future, right? As the heat is diffusing, the heat should always be going up. So this makes sense right here, right? So we are going to have to get all of the terms over here on our left side equation in terms of Jm plus 1, and we are going to have to uh, put get all the terms on our, the right side of our equation in terms of Jn, all right? And we can do that using the equations we came up with two videos ago when we performed the Crank-Nicholson method that gave us some equation that um, give you in terms how the temperature is changing as you're moving position. And we are going to be able to use this in order to change these J plus ones and J minus ones into just regular Js, all right? So we'll go ahead and start performing this now. We'll go ahead and do the left side of our equation first. Go ahead and erase this right here, give ourselves a little bit more room. All right, so we want to go from Tj plus 1, m plus 1 to just Tj, m plus 1. And in order to do that, we are going to be going from a position uh, further forward, and we're going to need to go to a position backwards, all right? So we're going to need to use this equation right here. This is showing you what you are going to need to multiply this by in order to step back a position. So this is pretty much going to be the same thing except multiply by E I K delta X, all right? And then we'll go ahead and just bring in the T J M plus one out to the front factor that out because everything is going to be a like term for all these once we substitute it. So this is going to be T, J, N plus 1 right here. And right here we are going to have the negative U multiplied by our E to the I, K, delta X. All right. And right here, we already have our Jn plus 1, so this is simply just going to be 1 plus 2u. And then over here, we are actually uh, stepping back a step, so what we are going to have to do is use this equation, which shows how it's going to relate when you are jumping forward a step. It's going to be pretty much the same thing, except the exponent is negative over here. So this is simply going to become negative u multiplied by e to the negative i k delta x. So we'll go ahead and write that out. All right, and this is going to be the left side of our equation right here. Now we'll go ahead and start doing this 
right side of the equation, and we're going to want to get all this in terms of T, J, N. And so right here we have a position forward from T, J, N, so we're going to need to use this equation. And we'll go ahead and factor out the T, J, N, like we did up here. So this is simply going to become U multiplied by the E I to the IK delta X. All right, and then we already have TJN right here, so this will become just 1 minus 2U. All right, and then we are taking a step back and trying to get that in terms of a step forward, so we'll use this equation down here. All right, there you have it. This is going to be our equation right here. We can go ahead and erase all this up here. All right, so the next step we are going to make is bringing in Euler's Law, which in previous videos we said that um, when you have these exponents, except one is positive and one is negative, and you're adding them together, that is going to give you this expression right here, 2 cosine k delta x. And if you look down here in both of these parentheses, we have this exact same scenario. We are adding together exponents, and they're the exact same except one is negative and one is positive. All right, so we are going to be able to um, utilize this, and uh, we'll go ahead and do that. We will also divide over this segment onto the other side, divide both sides by this, because we want to get tjn plus one all by itself. So we can go ahead and write that out now. All right, so we are going to have this expression on top of that expression. All right, and when you perform this Euler's method substitution in for this down here, you are going to get 2u cosine k delta x, right? And then you are also going to have this 1 minus 2u left over. All right, so we'll go ahead and write that out. Can't forget to leave that tjn out front. So we're going to have 2u cosine k delta x. And then we are still going to have this 1 minus 2u. All right, and then this is going to be over this expression, which when we use this Euler's method substitution, this is going to give us negative to u cosine k delta x because this is negative right here and then we're going to have to add this remaining 1 plus 2u to that so we'll go ahead and do that now All right, so our next step is going to be substituting the 2u out since we have a common factor right there. And when we do that, we are still going to have this 1, so we will leave that 1 out front. So here we will have 1 plus 2u and then cosine k delta x minus 1 since this was a negative 2u. All right, and then down here we'll do the same thing and substitute out that um, negative, that 2u, excuse me, all right? So we are still have that 1 out front because this 1 is uh, still there. It's not going away. So we are going to have 1 plus 2u, and then we will have a negative cosine k delta x plus 1. So the signs will be flipped there. Get some parentheses for our cosine function. All right, so something that we can do is we can go ahead and um, actually don't need a subtraction sign. This is getting multiplied. Not sure why that's there. To you. All right, 
our next step we can make is that we can multiply all of this by negative 1. So we get this term and this term um, all in the same. This should be negative right here. I think the negative was supposed to be inside the parentheses. That's what I was confused about. So we'll go ahead and multiply this by negative 1, flip the signs of all this. So this will become a plus 1, and then negative cosine, and then this will become subtraction out here. So now we have this term the same on both sides, all right? All right, so when we take a look at our cosine functions right here, we always know that it is going to be greater than negative 1 and less than 1, because that's just how... Um, cosine functions operate, all right? So we'll go ahead and write that out. So we have our cosine k delta x, and we know that this is always going to be um, between negative 1 and, uh, and 1, so we can go ahead and write that out. All right, and um, since this is being subtracted, we're not going to really worry about this negative side over here. So the greatest this can be possibly be is 1, and so the lowest we could get here is 1 minus 1, which would give us 0, all right? So we know that these functions right here are never going to be negative, all right? The lowest they can possibly be is 0, all right? So we can go ahead and write up our function in terms of omega. We'll get t, j n plus 1 equals t j n and we can go ahead and write this up as 1 minus omega over 1 plus omega alright and since um, this omega is being added on the bottom and subtracted from the bottom we know that there is no possible way that this could ever be equal to more than 1, all right? If you used 0 for omega, this would become 1 minus 0 over 1 plus 0, which would just be equal to 1. But earlier, we said that this is going to be stable as long as this expression over here remains less than or equal to 1. So being equal to 1 is not going to be an issue, all right? We just need to keep it smaller, all right? And um, even if... We can't go negative here, so say we wanted to go negative 2, this would become, omega is equal to, say, negative 2 or something, this would become 3 and then over negative 1, and uh, that, that wouldn't be an issue because that would still be less than or equal to 1. If you use negative 1 half, this would become um, 3 halves over 1 half, which would be 6, and that would be an issue, but you can't do that because, once again, we know that this omega right here, which is symbolizing this, cannot be, um, it can't be negative, all right? So this is cleared away. We know that this is always going to be less than or equal to 1, which is why when you use the Craig-Nicholson method, everything was stable, all right? You could use um, any um, values you wanted within your U equation, which was the, um, the time step, the position step, and of course the, uh, the, um, the diff heat diffusivity value and you could use whatever you wanted for those because it's always going to be stable, all right? That's why the Crank-Nicholson method doesn't have any issues with stability and that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like on the video, comment down what you want to see next and uh, enjoy the rest of your day.